holiday season is upon us so uh, we're gonna make a video about uh, how to try to stay fit and healthy throughout it if uh, that is even a thing do you need to worry about it or anything like that so we don't really have a kind of realistic time title for any of this topic but uh, I believe it's kind of things that everyone overcomplicates maybe sometimes um, and at the same time because they don't have a realistic goal realistic plan uh, this ends up being more than just festive uh, kind of uh, what's the right word I'm looking for might be like a di diversion from your goal. You know, if you have some kind of goal set up for yourself next year, I'm going to be doing this. I want to feel like that holidays come week two, and it's end up in a month, two months, and you're still not back on your previous routine. So uh, it, it's easy to be distracted. It's easy to yeah. let the holiday season distract you from things that you set out for yourself. And that, that's probably the most important part to understand about the holiday season. Nothing wrong with the holiday season. Nothing wrong with any of it, honestly, even the food. It's just people let the holiday season be an excuse for derailing them or uh, taking their attention away from the things that they have thought as their priority, right? And, and that's essentially what what it comes back to is and, and this is what I would like to kind of uh, get your opinion on something we have talked about previously which is gut health because people get away from their usual habits of the way they eat the way they exercise the way they go about their day could change in gut microbiome be a role player in why people find it so hard to get back on track so to speak um yeah, yeah. And, and but let's dial that back to the whole thing, right? Like, so if you guys or anybody, right, then you're not going to remember this, but we've done a whole video, a whole episode on actually, I think too, on gut microbiome, not just like what it is and how it affects your health, but also what really controls it, right? It's not just the bacteria. And that's it, right? Like, if I get good bacteria in my stomach, my gut microbiome is good. It's the things that support it right and one of the things that we talked about in that video is the brain gut and skin access okay so when it comes to the gut microbiome especially in the holidays you have to understand that most people in the holiday season uh are going to be in the northern hemisphere they're going to be in winter okay so that immediately changes the dynamics of your skin to your brain to your gut okay um so a really simple hack that I use with people is lean into the dress code for, for, for winter, which is, hey, when you're indoors, you want to be long sleeves, right? You want to be updressed when you're indoors. The reason for that is because you're going to spend way more time indoors and way more time under fake lighting the whole holiday season, okay? Um, and that is the starting point of messing with your gut microbiome, right? Because if you go back to that episode, you understand that the skin and the brain talk to each other, and that modulates what should be happening at the gut, what should be digesting, what it's expecting to digest, what it's not expecting to digest. And so if you're under fake lights a lot, what ends up happening is your brain is thinking that it is winter because the, the light environment is not sunlight, right? So your brain is thinking that it's winter. Your skin is thinking that it's summer because you're indoors all the time and you're not exposed to cold. So immediately your brain and your gut or your brain and your skin, sorry, are not talking appropriately for what to expect in your gut. And then you fill it full of Christmas stuff, right? Like chocolates, uh, candies, whatever, right? Everything that you can think of, cake, whatever part, wine, everything, right? Um, so then your gut is actually disturbed because the brain is also not able to control the gut because the gut is not just controlled by your gut microbiome. It's controlled by that brain gut axis and the brain is controlled by the skin and the gut simultaneously. So the feedback loops essentially get broken during winter. If you spend a lot of time inside and a lot of skin is getting that interaction and your eyes, right? So the bit, the biggest hack that I have for anybody 
that wants to just enjoy the holidays, eat whatever you want, uh, or for the most part, right? Um, is the things that we referred to right from the very beginning. If you continually get outside and it's winter time, you're going to be exposed to cold. Now your skin starts to interpret, hey, it's actually winter. And your eyes and your brain will also interpret that it's winter, especially if you follow some of the other things that we've talked about. Hey, at night, you want to make sure you turn off your Wi-Fi. You want to make sure you turn down lighting dim so that your brain is now understanding, hey, the day has gotten shorter. It's significantly gotten shorter. The skin is registering cold. So now it sets you up for wintertime digestion. What does that mean? That means that proteins and fats will be easily digestible now, no matter what you eat of them, right? So even if you eat junk food, most of that is going to have a fair amount of fat. It's going to be digested totally fine. The thing that's not being expected to be digested is the carbohydrates that will come with that. And that's where, you know, just the sensible stuff that most fitness people are going to tell you is what you want to employ. Hey, on Thanksgiving day, eat the Thanksgiving stuff, right? And then the next day, get back on track, right? Uh, same thing around Christmas, same thing around New Year's. Um, if you do it for, you know, if you eat whatever you're going to eat for one day or maybe two days, right? It's not really going to disturb anything if you keep the rest of your days intact with the correct signaling for your gut uh, to, to work well, right? Because that's the worst thing is when your gut starts to be kind of disrupted, people tend to reach for more junk. Mm. Yeah. That's, so, that's a, a big thing that I've noticed. That's definitely something I have noticed even without any holidays. When people start to snack or do something like that, let's give you an example of somebody I've worked with. It was a couple. And they uh, started eating completely different. Uh, I told them, hey, you're going to look and feel much better. And they're like, what the hell are you on about? So anyway, months pass, uh, two, three, three months in, they decide to renovate their kitchen. And after that, it took them a week to do that. And three days in, they came to me like, now I understand what you meant by we're going to feel better. Because I never understood how much better they started to feel because there was no disruption of the of their new habit. But when they had to renovate the kitchen, obviously the food was not available in a manner that they were used to eating for over these last yeah, couple they had to order out more. Now they started food. to yeah. get tired, lethargic, sleep was disrupted, and so on and so forth. So this is what I find with people who tend to only follow calories instead of actually following what they eat, that for whatever reasons, they never get to the point uh, where they feel full of energy they uh, they can get in a great shape but they were still feel tired sore longer than necessary and so on and so forth which we kind of have touched before like hey food quality should be really high priority anyway you know stop uh, eating pop tarts and expecting that uh, it's, it's going to be good for you it looks great on paper but in real life probably not uh what no, other things would you look into kind of setting up for somebody who's going into this uh, festive season and wants to maintain if not even improve as much as they can because let's be honest a lot of people will have a luxury of not going to work so this is the best time to actually train calorie surplus and uh, unlimited time to rest so is there any things that they should be kind of looking at maybe setting some realistic goals maybe uh, staying active with their family and friends uh, yeah yeah it, it kind literally of key pattern it, it or whatever yeah. In, in that scenario, I say that you have a lot of advantages to do the things that me and you have described because you're not having to go to work. Mm -hmm. Like, like I'm not, I'm not joking. So number one, yes, you're going to be able to train more, but only if you're able to recover more. So what, how do we, how do we recover more? First thing in the morning, sometime in the first three hours of waking up, a, a hack that I would use if you're trying to make extra progress uh, for you know a short period of time is front load your protein for that day. Like, I don't care what anybody says about any studies. The point is this. We want to get enormous amounts of protein. We're talking, you know, if you're a male, 60 to 70 grams of protein, that's a steak, right? That's, that's a steak in the morning, right? Then what that does is it also is going to set you up to have more satiety for all the holiday foods later in the evening. So it doesn't mean that you're not going to eat them or you shouldn't eat them. It's that you'll have one or two and you'll be like, you know what? I actually kind of feel full. I'm not really starving and I'm not going to gorge myself because mm -hmm. you front loaded a whole lot of protein and fat in the morning. 
the, the other thing that that protein and fat in the morning will do is it will raise neurotransmitters, especially if you're coupling, coupling that with some cold neurotransmitters being dopamine, adrenaline, noradrenaline, all of these are going to be very helpful for, for motivation, right? So now you have motivation to train harder, motivation to be more active. And ideally, you, you use that to your advantage of you don't just go to the gym, but you also go outside, you do some winter activities, do something uh, that's fun with your with your family, right? Like something outside of just being in the house, right? Um, the recipe for gaining fat and not making progress is staying in the house and thinking you're saving calories for the holiday food. Mm. Like that's the worst mindset. And that's actually what people kind of think is correct. Well, I'm not going to eat anything until I get to the holiday dinner so that I can have the holiday dinner and I saved all my calories for that. I'm like, that's a recipe for overeating because you cannot track the amount of calories in those holiday foods. You mm. think that you ate 2,000 calories, you probably ate 4,000 calories. So the solution is you front load your good food most days, if not all the days, including the day that you're going to eat the holiday foods so that you eat less of the holiday foods. If you're active, you're outside, you're waking up at the same time, um, and you're uh, doing all of the kind of the, the habits, the daily habits that have nothing to do with food, correct? you actually end up under eating most holiday foods uh, compared to what you would normally. Um, and that's what I found just over experience, over with experience with lots and lots of clients of, hey, you just prioritize the things you know you should be doing first thing in the morning. Um, and then if that allows you time to and motivation to train more, then I, was, I always tell them, just lean into it, just train more. And then the recovery, how do you recover better from that? Well, if it's not a holiday day, right, holiday evening that you're going to be spending with a bunch of family, treat it like any other day, right? Be be regimented, just like uh, we've highlighted. Hey, light at night is probably not beneficial for recovery. Dim it down, right? Have have a fireplace setting. Have have a have a candle lit uh, type of setting, or or like what I do, right? Like I just have some red lights that get turned on in the evening. That immediately changes the mood into recovery mode at the time of day when it's supposed to be recovery time. And that accelerates your recovery. You repeat it the next day. And yeah, you if you're not gonna, if you have a couple, two, three weeks of, hey, I have holiday vacations uh, and I'm not gonna be going to work, it's a perfect time to start forming a new habit, right? Hey, you get up, get outside, get a little bit of cold, you eat a nice big breakfast. Next thing you know, by noon, you're feeling a little bit antsy and you want to go work, work out, go work out, right? Go work out, get, get tired. And then later that evening, you, you, you don't have any regrets of, you know, eating your holiday food and still understanding that you need to prioritize uh, the rest of your protein and the, the rest of your macros for the rest of the day. Doesn't mean you need to weigh things. Doesn't mean you need to prepack things. I have people that are trying to get in shape right now over the holidays. And I just tell them, just keep eating the same stuff. When new stuff, you know, you go to dinner with friends and whatever, eat whatever they're going to do. But if you've ate three out of the four meals correctly for that day, it's not going to make that big of a difference. It just isn't. The the the. And I think product. what you are saying uh, is uh, kind of important to understand that you're not saying eat big breakfast so you don't eat at night. It's just you won't be able to eat that much anymore. Correct. Yeah. And you're not just trying to force yourself and then go at night. Oh, I'm going to just snack on this. No, just, just eat according to your appetite at that day. But now you have actually improved your ability to recover and be better for next day because you had high quality food leading up to that meal. Correct. Correct. Instead of the opposite mindset where people are like, I'm just going to save my calories and not eat anything. I'm, I'm going to under eat so that I can eat more of this junk food. I'm like, well, the junk food is never going to be good for recovery. Like that's just kind of how it is, right? So immediately you have to think about it completely different. You've got to set yourself up for the real success. And this comes back to the, how we opened this episode, which is people use the holidays to push pause on their goal, right? Mm -hmm. I look at it the other way. Hey, the holiday is this thing that you're going to do anyway. How do we make it work for the goal? If the goal is getting in better shape, then the priority is still high quality food that you know that there's going to be a meal or two that day that's not high quality food. So you have to make up for that, right? That doesn't mean you you have to skip those meals. It just means 
you prioritize the meals that you know are going to help you for the goal at hand. It's And that's what I mean by the mindset is the really the biggest goal that you need to cultivate going into the holiday season. Do I really want this? And if I do, and you have, especially if you have a coach, if it's a good coach, that's what they're going to do. This is the type of info. That's the type of talk that I'm going to have with my clients is, hey, if you really want to prioritize, this is how we need to prioritize it so that you move forward and not backwards. And the, the biggest thing that I've you know seen back from the clients is they get afraid that they're going to eat too much calories. I'm like, okay, but if you prioritize good, high quality food, I promise you, you're not going to overeat the holiday food. You'll get to enjoy it, but you won't be like, I need thirds and I need seconds and I need fourths and I'm going to, you know, eat the whole pie or all of and, and sure enough, you know, there's already clients that reported back from, from Thanksgiving. They're like, I'm surprisingly a pound lighter, mm. you know, today, right? Yeah, reporting you, today. you probably told them also to, hey, go outside, have a whole exposure, this and that, where just yesterday I was reading this study about how cold exposure increases your intramuscular lipid deposits and people blow their head. It's like, that does not sound good, but it changes the structure of the lipid, which actually fights off inflammation. It is right. a good thing because now you have all that stuff transformed into energy and everything else to help your mitochondria work more sufficiently. So if you've told them that, uh, yes, there's no surprise that they feel much better and lighter because they're not constantly inflamed anymore. They right. have yeah, even energy, when they eat, their even when they eat inflammatory foods, correct, right? If, if they keep up these consistent habits that, you know, wintertime being cold, uh, but even if, let's, for example, say we lived in the Southern Hemisphere, Australia, right? So Christmas is their summer, right? Yep, 40 degrees, so you've been there, done that, horrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would still want them to go outside because guess what else is also anti-inflammatory? We know that infrared light is anti-inflammatory. So getting them outside in strong sunlight because that's what's available at that time of year also flights off inflammation. It also makes it so that when you eat inflammatory things or do inflammatory things, the recovery from those inflammatory things is faster, right? So, and that's not really surprising, uh, we even have data that's being misinterpreted where people are like, oh, if you get cold, you're going to lose muscle because it blunts the inflammatory effect of, of the of the muscle tissues. I'm telling you, too many people are too inflamed. They're going to get a net benefit from getting cold and lowering inflammation. Only elite athletes that their life is the the, the training, they don't have stress the rest of their life. They're already that's eating. That's something I really wanted to touch up on because next step would be, okay, get your daily habits under control. Don't worry about food as much as you are focusing on just make sure you're eating high quality stuff uh, beforehand. And then number th three would be stress management because for some people, this would be a very stressful period. Oh, I need to meet up with my family that I hate. It. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. whatever else, you know, what can people do? First of all, how can stress make everything worse? And what can they do about to lower the amount of stress they might be exposed through this period? Um, so, the how stress is going to affect things is it's going to directly affect decision making but i mean that's the the root of what what you know so what does that mean right is it means that you if you are under stress and you're more likely to overeat if you're under if you're over sorry if you're over stress you're more likely to overeat you're also more likely to get poor sleep you're also more likely to uh have emotions that you that don't make sense for the situation that's what stress it will entail and you know that's all of those things i'm sure that everybody has experienced them to some level during the holidays right so that's not really surprising or new to anybody so what do you do about it right like what are things that you can do about it um i'm i'm not joking the best thing that you can do uh is be mindful of your breathing and the amount of light that enters your eye. And by breathing, I mean, literally going from an aroused, stressed state will will make it so that you'll catch yourself mouth breathing. Mm -hmm. Just closing your mouth and nasal breathing, like intentionally, hey, I'm only going to breathe through my nose for the next 10 minutes, right? And setting a timer, and you can literally do this at any point in time during the day. Immediately, that will lower your stress. 
just the, after those 10 minutes, you will feel less stressed of whatever it is that you are thinking, right? And the goal is to distract your brain from thinking about whatever is stressing you out because you're going to have to focus on only nasal breathing, right? Like that's the whole goal is to do that. If you want to take it a step further, you can use um, uh, uh, a different type of technique uh, with nasal breathing, uh, which is it, when you take your intake breath, when you get to the top of the breath, open your mouth and suck in a little bit more. What that does is it actually stimulates your, your vagus nerve so that it relaxes that whole system of fight or flight. So it looks like, and then you hold it for a, a second and then you let it out through the nose only. Hmm. And you just repeat that. You repeat that for five minutes. Not, it doesn't take that long. Like just that, that act. That's a great way know. how to improve your sleep quality as well. That's what I found. Yes, absolutely. And and that's that's what I was saying. At the very least, around the holidays, I become very mindful of being as relaxed as possible before I go to sleep, right? Mm -hmm. So this is a little trick that, that helps a lot, about 20 minutes about going before going to sleep. Uh, you know, you brush your teeth, get ready, just sit down for five minutes, do that little breathing technique, and then relax in your bed. The other thing, obviously, is some blue light blocking glasses if you don't have red light, because that by itself through the eye also relaxes. Uh, it, it changes the nervous system to anticipate parasympathetic responses and elevates parasympathetic response over sympathetic responses. So at the at the very end of the day is when you want to capitalize on de-stressing anything and everything that you can think of. And this is a little bit more difficult in the holiday season because people want to gather and party and and, and be up late at night knowing better means that you can make doesn't mean you don't have to avoid those things it just means that hey tomorrow night i'm going to go to bed an hour early or i'm going to make sure that at least when i do go to bed i get very relaxed so i can recover right it's as simple as that um because there i'm again i'm not telling anybody not to party or not to stay up late and have drinks with friends or any of that just understand that you're paying you're going to have to pay that deficit at mm -hmm. some other point in time how do you pay it, right? Like that's the thing is, okay, I understand that. How do I do it? You 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 do it by hey, when you're at home, you capitalize on making sure you're as less stressed as possible going into the evening. Um, you know, put off, you know, looking at your phone, emails, things of that nature. You know, that's the other thing that always kind of gets people stressed is a lot of Amazon orders, a lot of gifts that they're buying, racking up a bunch of debt on their on their credit card you're going to do it anyway, right? Like that's, that's, it's not avoidable. So instead of worrying about it and keeping yourself up at night, that's, you know, this is more of a mindset of learning to turn things off, turning stimulation into your brain off by just avoiding the technology to begin with every evening. That's probably the the biggest thing that that people can take away from this is the evening is the time to relax and spend it with your family and any input that you can control, whether that's your lighting, whether that's your, your technology devices, should be less priority, right? Priority should be change the mood every evening so that you are relaxed enough to actually get proper sleep. Proper sleep will allow for proper decision making the next days, you know, during the activities of the next day, which will also allow you to be slightly less stressed every morning instead of compounding the stress, right? Like that's what, that's probably the number one thing is that sleep gets disturbed from stress very easily and poor sleep leads to poor everything else. How would you look into tracking uh, progress on, uh, on the gym diary? Would this be something you would kind of encourage to change or would you just go like, hey, you know what, stick to your plan. Everything else is going to be completely different, but it might be actually beneficial for you because you have more calories, more sleep, less stress if you do everything right. So or would you just say, you know what, you're not going to do anything the way you do throughout the year. Just go to gym and enjoy yourself, which would be your preferred strategy. I would say to stick to the plan. I would say to stick to the plan because that will elucidate whether the adaptions happen quicker or not, according to what they're wanting to 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 do. Right, like 
again, this is me talking to my clients, right? I've designed so a program. To me, before you even go into details, it sounds like this could be a great experiment for you to figure out if you going on a holiday could maybe be supported with more intense training block if eating more junk food actually helps you to recover for, during a very short period of time. Yeah, yeah, it, that, that's what I would say. So that, that's actually something that I have coached people because th this is, you know, this is a conversation that comes up. What do I do with my training? Do I just train the same? Like, the, the answer is yes. But in the training that I program for people, it's based on RPE and percentages. So mm -hmm. on some movements, I literally tell them, hey, you might feel stronger than you have been. If you do, increase the weight, increase the reps. Uh, and then if I see that they're progressing after a week or two, I I'll add in a little bit more volume, right? Like immediately or the other way around, like I will see, Hey, they're not quite progressing like they were before. And then, you know, their check-in comes in and they're, they're more stressed, right? Hey, I've gotten poor sleep. Something happened with, you know, my dog or my kid or whatever. Um, and so immediately you can kind of see that, Hey, stress is causing a deficit in your recovery. Let's actually remove a workout day. Let's give you a little bit of leeway with your stress management or the other way around, like you said, right? You know, an executive or wh whatever, you know, that doesn't have to take care of anything over the holidays and just actually has time off, right? That is a completely gonna, gonna be a different scenario, hopefully, if they're not very stressed. And yeah, they might get away with harder training. And that means that they will make slightly better progress uh, for that short period of time. That That is a little bit of a experiment. Again, it's short-lived, but you can see that, right? And then you can record it and then you can document it for the, the client of like, hey, this is actually what ended up happening when you didn't, when, when you did have the time to prioritize the things in the right way. You slept better. We have some of that data. You slept more time. You recovered better. You felt better. And you actually made progress in a time of year where, people tend to kind of like put it off to the side, right? And that is valuable information to know because that allows you little bouts of time, like when you are busy, right? Like, hey, I have to travel this week and then the next week I got a meetings and then, you know, I'm really busy for three weeks. Then we go, okay, well, what happens in the next three weeks after that? Oh, well, I can have some time off or I can relax a little bit. I'm like, okay, great. We'll dial back your training. Let's cap with, let's for this stressful time, capitalize on the lifestyle stuff dial back the training so that you don't go backwards, adjust the nutrition so that you don't go backwards. And then after we can make up for it because we know that you can because of this little experiment that happened at the holidays. Like little things like that are valuable around the holidays as far as like keeping track of that. Again, it goes back to the very beginning of this, which is if you have a goal and you're serious about it, the holiday season is an opportunity to figure out how, how well you do under stress, if it's going to be stressful, or how well you do when you're not stressed, if it's not going to be stressful, right? It's hard for anybody to know whether the holidays are going to be extra stressful or less stressful. It just depends on that. Yeah, it's, person. it's a great point because uh, we always kind of uh, emphasize that whatever you do, it's for you. Like you do a blood test, no matter how numbers come back, they mean nothing if we don't know anything about you. So if you go to doctors and show them something, hey, my cholesterol is off and this and that, but they never looked into your stress hormones, sex hormones and everything else, it's just a guesswork, you know? Uh, so, and for me, I'll try to summarize everything we just kind of went through is that the four big hitters would be uh, understand that your habits need to be aligned with, first of all, where you live and time of the year. So let's say if you live in uh, Canada, you're going to be doing completely different things if, than if you're living in Australia, because time, uh, weather, and everything else will be completely different. Then second, uh, the biggest hitter will be stress management. You know, can you manage to avoid being under too much pressure, uh, which can lead to just bad decisions or sometimes inconsistent decisions? Uh Number three would be high quality food over everything else. Uh, treat yourself as if you actually care about yourself. So give yourself high quality food leading up to enjoying the holiday meals later in the day and, and all those kind of things. And uh, make sure that your training is taken with a bit of uh, curiosity. 
just to understand yeah. how it really affects your body when you're going through these periods which might pop up two or three times a year where for a few days or a week or so uh, you're not working under the favorite word of everyone optimal conditions so is there anything you feel like should be added for somebody who's trying to maintain or even improve their fitness health uh, overall well-being levels throughout this period or do you feel like if they nail these that should be more than enough to make sure that you come out on the other side uh, ready to rock and roll and uh, kick, kick start the new year uh, in a really good place no i i that's a great summary it really is like those are the things you should focus on at this time of the year if you make those fl as flawless as possible right especially the lifestyle stuff and the mindset hey I am prioritizing this for myself. If you do those two things, you you make better decisions. It's just that simple. You will make better decisions and those decisions will also be inclusive with the other priorities, which is holiday festivities and enjoying family members and things of that nature. Um, and overall, when you come out the other end, you're you're going to be, even if the physical progress wasn't manifested like you thought it was going to manifest, the mindset and the mentality progress if you come out the other end and you perform like like we've said will give you much much more drive and flexibility for any other challenges that might be uh coming up that will come up right that they just they just are going to happen um so the holiday season is really the way i see it a stress test for your ability to be uh on point with your goal because your goal will be challenged every step of the way right so the holidays are kind of like the ultimate stress test but they are able to be uh, utilized to to your advantage and utilized so that you don't actually go backwards in in the, your your fitness or health awesome david thanks for your time and i'll uh, catch you in the next video awesome